Hello, this is the short video uh, designed to tell you how you can calculate average nucleotide identities so that you can describe how similar or different your bacteriophages to others. Um, that's the basis for, or was the basis, for creating clusters along with uh, the overall genome uh, structure and uh, which FAMs were included, at least it was until recently when they started looking at gene content, content as the primary uh, decision-making uh, 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 criteria, uh, but this was for a long time, and it still is one of the uh, bases for uh, speciation decisions when it comes to bacteria. So this is an important tool to have, and it allows you to, to make an interesting figure as well, for your poster. So it's a, a pretty easy thing to do and it'll be useful to you. Uh, it's been used for about a decade or so um, and it's based off of the idea that more similar phages have more similar DNA and uh, it's the digital version of a wet lab experiment where they would take pieces of DNA from uh, organisms and try and get them to stick together and the more similar they were uh, the easier it would be for them to stick together, to hybridize. And so this is essentially the same thing being done digitally. Okay? And so where you might see that would be in a paper. And so here, for example, is a, a hatful paper. He's the uh, head scientist at Sea Phages. Okay? Looking at a bunch of mycobacteria phages and looking at how they were uh, organized into clusters. Now this is a, a little bit of an older one, right? Back uh, when they were first figuring out the clustering. And we have, you know, an example of some of the clusters. And you can see in these clusters we have uh, average nucleotide identities. And in these clusters we have what would become the subclusters. And so these are tables, okay? And in these tables, along the left side, you have the names of the phages. And on the top, you have the names of the phages. And you have uh, each one being compared to itself. And of course, the average nucleotide identity, the, the DNA is identical when you compare the phage to itself. When you compare it to another phage, it can be very similar. Like in this group, the uh, average nucleotide identity is in the 90s for the most part, or very close to it. It can be pretty similar here. It's uh, in the mostly in the 70s, or it can be not quite so similar. And here it's in the 60s. So this group is very similar. This group is is pretty similar to itself, although not as similar as these are to itself. But these two groups are not very similar to each other, and that's what this is telling you, right? And you can see the same kind of thing happening. Uh, in, in, other one, in other sections, right? And so that's what you use this for. And so how do you do this? Well, the answer is it depends on what you're looking for. Whether you want to create a big thing like this of, you know, 10 or more phages, or you just want to compare a couple phages. If you want to compare just a couple phages, then the easiest thing for you to do is to use a web app. There are a lot of them. Um, uh, this should say Easy BioCloud. I'll fix that. Um, and I added a link to uh, one that I like. Uh, that's in a list of tools here at Easy BioCloud, um, and it'll take you here to an ANI calculator. This is actually using Ortho ANI instead of ANI. It's a updated version, and it's uh, probably a little more accurate. You can get a uh, uh, some information about what ortho A and I is right here if you like and for this all you got to do is you know uh, provide the information to the software upload the FASTA files where can you get the FASTA files well you can get them right here from phages DB and so for example let's look at one of our phages from Nana uh, from uh, pre a previous year Nanodon Streptomyces phage Nanodon it's a, a BD1 well, you'd get the FASTA file right from here. You can just save it. 
And if you want something to compare it to that's similar, you can click on BD1s and there's a whole bunch of them. And so we can go to any one of those and save that fa FASTA file as well. And now we have that. And so I've actually done that and I have some FASTA files. And from here, we can upload Nanodon, and we can upload any one of these BD1s, and we can find out very quickly how similar their DNA, the DNA is. And if just two phages worth of DNA is what you need, of information is what you need, then poof, you're done. Right, you know that the ANI, uh, ANI is uh, 83.23, and then it gives you some information about how that was calculated. Right, the genome length of both of the phages, how much of it was aligned and how much of it was not, because remember it breaks it into small pieces and only aligns the pieces that match. So some of it doesn't get aligned. Right, um, and so uh, that's that's useful information. This is really the one that gets reported and you have a citation okay um, but what if you want more well if you want more you have some options if you want to do uh, up to 10 phages you can use their tool ortho a and i o a t this is a great tool but it's kind of a pain to get it set up because you'll need to install this program which is a um, uh, a Java program so you won't need any special you know uh, environment but it will also require you to install blast and then to tell this where blast is so it isn't you know obvious how to set it up once it's set up it's very nice and so for example we'll get it going here All you have to do is add a few genomes and then you can tell it to run and within a few minutes It calculates the ANI for you, which is really quite remarkable. And it will give you um, a table. Which will just put right here so you can look at it. It'll show you that same kind of matrix that you saw there. So a phage compared to itself, compared to the others. Or it'll give you um, a nice little uh, phylogeny of the ones that are most closely related based on A and I. And these are the A and I values. So that's a pretty neat tool. So do you have to go through that um, with uh, the the color coding being uh, connected to how uh, high the A and I rating is? So do you have to go through that whole process of installation? Uh, no, because DNA Master does have the ability to do this, just not quite as uh, uh, prettily. Um, the instructions of how to do it are here on the bioinformatics guide under DNA Master Genome Comparison Tool. That happens to be way down here, DNA Master Genome Comparison Tool under Mechanics DNA Master. And what it tells you how to do in here is how to add phages to your genome manager. And what that means is how to make a pile of 
genomes that you want to compare to each other because really there's a lot of tools in there other than just a calculator of A and I. Okay. One of the things that you're going to have to do is unlock the ability to perform these calculations. So right here where it says to perform genome comparisons, you have to enter the release code. So make sure you do that. Release code Watson. So follow that instruction. Okay. And so I'll run you through this really quick. It can do some interesting things and it's worth playing around with it a little bit. So before you start, go to Preferences, Miscellaneous, Release Code, Watson, Apply. Okay. And then you're going to want to go to Genome. I'm sorry, Tools, Genome Manager. And you're going to want to uh, put whatever it is you want to compare here into your uh, browser, into your Genome Manager. And there are different ways to add files to the Genome Manager. One thing you can do is, if you have a DNA Master file for it, you can save it right from here. And so, for example, if something isn't in GenBank, you can uh, just open it up as a DNA Master file, and you can, um, from here, add to database. And poof, it'll appear in the database. That also means that if all you have is a FASTA file on, uh, on PhagesDB, you can download it, auto-annotate it, you don't need to blast it so it's quick, and then you can add it to the database. If something is in GenBank, you can add it to this directly. And the way you do that is you go back here, and let's say, for example, we want to add this first one, um, Aeronocolis. Is Aeronocolis in GenBank? Yes, it is. It's convenient. It tells us what the accession number is, so we'll copy it. Go back to DNA Master. From here, Retrieve, Fetch by Accession. We'll paste the accession number, search for it, and there it is. Keep it in mind to move it over there. This is all written down in the guide. And then we want to save it to our database. Fetch it. Takes a second. And once it does it, now it's added to that. Okay, now when you're ready to do your analysis, easiest way to do this is go to the clipboard and take everything that's on the clipboard and add it all. Okay? Because then you can go and you can go to Genome Comparisons, Manual, add everything from your clipboard, and you don't need to add them individually, and analyze. takes a minute. This can take a very long time, by the way, if you add 50 different genomes. But uh, if you're adding 20 or 15, it takes a few minutes. If you're adding 5, it doesn't take very long at all. All right. Now you have data. And so what can you do with it? Well, take a look around. You actually have information. You can compare two phages to each other. You can look at how the maps are put together in DNA Master, a lot like they are in Famorator. And you can look at pairwise information. And so in here, this is where you find quite a number of different uh, comparisons, right? All of these are the things you can look at. What we want is average nucleotide identity. And so there it is, right there. You have a list of the, all of the phages here. You have a list of all of the phages there. You can export it right there as an Excel spreadsheet. 
And so that's what I just created. So that's that. The thing you saw on the um, on the uh, figure was just missing, you know, the bottom half of these, right? It was cleaned up, but essentially, that's what you saw on the, in the paper, right there. Or you can take this and you can do the same thing that that other uh, program did, which is you can use this to draw a tree. And so it's putting the ones with the, cl with the uh, most similar A and I into a tree. Now, there's no reliability ratings, right? There's no bootstrap values here, which is a downside to uh, what you've learned how to do in some of the other videos. But it's still interesting. And you can save this or print it. Save right here or print. So hopefully uh, that's valuable to you uh, and something you can use. Again, uh, just doing it here with very closely related phages is not necessarily the most valuable thing, but it does show you that it belongs to uh, a particular subcluster or cluster like BD1 in this particular case but you can ask other interesting questions and so now you know how to do it uh, calculate average nucleotide identities uh, in good health